Good morning everyone and welcome to the Baking Biker. Today we're headed out on a scavenger hunt as part of the Washington State BMW Riders Rally. Last night our friend Bill was able to rejoin us because CJ Cycle in Tenasket was able to fix his tire and get him back on the road. So thank you so much CJ Cycle. This morning we stopped at the rally venue at Ferry County Fairgrounds and uh, where Bill got checked in, we got some last minute scavenger hunt information and off on the road we are. So, let's ride. Hey everyone. Well, we're headed east on Highway 20 and we're starting out on our scavenger hunt. We're planning on stopping at six of the scavenger hunt checkpoints today. So our first stop will be at the top of Sherman Pass and then we'll head east to Kettle Falls and then north on Highway 25 to Marcus and then we're going to go uh, back across the Columbia River and north on 395 and there's a stop there just off on the highway there. I don't think that there's a town there or anything but right there uh, there's a stop where we're going to make a uh, scavenger hut checkpoint. And then we're going to head west on Boulder Creek Road to Curlew. And there's a checkpoint there. And then we're going to uh, go to our last checkpoint for the day. We'll be at Bodie on Taroda Creek Road. So those are the checkpoints we're going to go to today. And right now we're headed east on Highway 20, which is also known as the Sherman Pass Scenic Byway. Where we'll stop at the first scavenger checkpoint, which is at the top of Sherman Pass. So our first stop was at the top of Sherman Pass here on Highway 20, and where there are three wolf silhouettes. So for our scavenger hunt, we were to count how many wolf silhouettes uh, there are up there. But you have to look really closely because you'll see two right away. You think, okay, there's two wolf silhouettes. But if you looked up higher, you'll find the third one. So uh, um, they kind of mentioned that to look closely. And so you're thinking, okay, there must be more than what you first originally see. And sure enough, there's three instead of two. So that was our first stop there at the top of Sherman Pass. So you're asking me, Kathy, why are there three wolf silhouettes at the top of Sherman Pass? And I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't know why. There's nothing up there at the pass that tells you why there's those three wolf silhouettes. So I wish I could answer that question for you, but I don't know why they're up there. I don't know who put them up there, why they're up there, why there's three of them. Anyway, there was no information about them, but on our... Uh, scavenger hunt we were just to see how many are there up there so now it's time onward to our next scavenger hunt uh, checkpoint and so across the Columbia River over towards Kettle Falls and uh, let's see what our next checkpoint is going to be so our second checkpoint was at the Kettle Falls Historical Center uh, well, we had to find the name of the charter member, and his name was Joseph Norton Kessler. The historical center is on St. Paul's Mission Road, uh, which follows the route that used to transport goods around Kettle Falls. Uh, when Grand Coulee Dam was built, uh, this part of the Columbia River was flooded, so Kettle Falls is no longer. And also because of Grand Coulee Dam, and the flooding of the Columbia River in this area, the town of Kettle Falls had to be relocated to its current location. So now we're headed north on Highway 25 to Marcus for our third checkpoint.
Spider Press was just a little out and back, and we're headed back up 25, so actually it's back south, and back on the Columbia. What's nice about doing an out and back is that you get to see the scenery in both directions, because sometimes you miss some scenery going one way, and you get to see it coming back. Close my visor here so it's not quite as windy. You miss scenery like this coming up. the Columbia. There's the railroad tracks. Yeah, let's see. There. Come back across the Columbia on Highway 395. We'll head north to our next stop, some mailbox. That is a great view. We have some beautiful roads around here in Washington. Great views. Beautiful country. It's a beautiful place. And it's nice getting off the freeways onto these other roads, other highways, seeing them all. And the scavenger hunt's been fun, taking us places we probably would have just rode on by, not taking the time. So today it's not about the mileage, it's about the scenery and and stopping at places and seeing places. Stopping at the historic sites, at just little landmarks, city parks. Well, we just stopped at the uh, fourth checkpoint, which was a mailbox right off of Highway 395. One of the mailboxes is painted with the Seattle Seahawk colors. Uh, for, but for the scavenger hunt, we had to write down the name uh, on the other mailbox next to the Seattle Seahawk mailbox. So now we're on Boulder Creek Road, heading to Curlo uh, for our fifth checkpoint. Wow, we have cows on the road. I guess this gives new meaning to free-range cows. I've never ridden on a road where cows roam free like this. I know we just went over a cow grade, but this is the first time actually having cows on the road and the shoulder. There's even a cow walking along the shoulder. So we'll just keep our speed down just in case these cows decide to cross the road. Just jump out in front of our motorcycles. Just keep the speed down. See that fire truck? We're here in Curlew and we're supposed to get the name of the manufacturer off that fire truck. So I'll walk over there and get a picture. Well, we met this gentleman here, and he's showing us his place. Here, this is called organized chaos. <laughs> organized chaos. <laughs> I live huh? a chaotic lifestyle, and I can't seem to change. I see. The American pickers would like this place. I can't seem to change. I'll go the easy way. Okay. So we'll see what he's got here. He's got all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah. Wow. He lives right here, huh? Whatever you done, you go and pick whatever you want. The raspberries are doing good. Oh, look at the berries, yeah. Raspberries. I got some growing at home with you not doing too good. All right, what an interesting man. And oh my goodness, the stuff he has at that house is incredible. And apparently he owns the fire truck that we just took a picture of. So I gotta get turned around. So I'll be right back, get turned around. Oh, this looks perfect. Actually, didn't need to turn around. 
It'll take me up to the main drag. There we go. Quite an interesting gentleman in his house and that gypsy trailer he's working on for a fair, getting it ready uh, to be an attraction at, at a fair, at a Renaissance fair, he said. So he owns that fire truck there. Wow. Pretty fascinating. We got the tour. next stop. I'm not sure where our next stop is. We are here at Bodie. This is an old ghost town. Yeah, as you can see, there's nothing here. I'm going to stay just parked right here. But there's a driveway back there that has enough. So I'm going to put my kickstand down. There we go. I know I'm hanging out in the road a little bit, but there's not much here. So we'll go see what the little sign says. So I'm glad we stopped here and read the sign about Bodie because it has some interesting information about Bodie. It said that the first town of Bodie started about a mile south of the existing location. And then at the existing location, uh, they discovered gold and they built a gold mine and they moved the whole town to the new location next to the gold mine. And also, the other interesting information there at Bodie is that between 1902 and 1911, uh, the Wrigley Brothers of Chewing Gum fame owned the gold mine. So I'm glad we stopped. I'm glad we read the sign. It's pretty fascinating, the information about some of these towns, especially some of the old ghost towns and their history. So I'm glad we stopped. dinner we're here at the campgrounds my pack talk is talking to me there we go so now it's time to head back to the motel we anyway, had a nice ride today we're headed out of the campgrounds had dinner here uh, Rick learned how to repair a tubeless tire I got a new strap for my bears in the back seat yes i have bears in my back seat i guess i should take a picture of my little bears in the back seat okay there we go yep there we go so we're going back to the motel i believe we're going to get some gas on the way back and then we'll be ready for and then we'll be ready for uh, tomorrow's ride and see where we go tomorrow. Oh, what a nice evening it is. It's a little cool, it's about 68 degrees. But it's, it's turned out to be a really nice evening. Got our gas, ready to head back to the room. A great day on the motorcycle today. Saw some lovely countryside, interesting people. 
Yeah. I didn't catch the man's name, and I'm sorry about that. Sorry about not knowing his name, but interesting character and all of his stuff. And cows on the road. New meaning to free range cows there. I think they were trying to escape. See, they got on the highway and hoping that they could make it to California and be happy cows. So that was pretty, I've not seen cows on the road like that, except in England once. So anyway, it's been a great day. I hope you enjoyed the videos and the pictures and thank you for watching.